It's hard to believe it's been six years since I first walked my then four and a half year old daughter Zoe across the parking lot to meet Richard Sperling at the tennis courts and have her participate in the pilot days of what would become acing autism. I was so excited for that moment. It was the first time in the two plus years since my daughter had been diagnosed with autism that we were doing something purely for fun, for recreation, for sport. Our lives had become all about therapies and coping strategies, reinforcement schedules and ABA programs. We lived in fear of things like circle time and pretty much had forgotten all about making sure our child was having fun. That first tennis session didn't go smoothly. We were on clay courts and Zoe picked up the clay and put it in her mouth. She wouldn't focus. We couldn't get her attention. She looked in every direction except the one we wanted. As a parent and a former collegiate tennis player who always assumed her children would also play competitive sports, I was crushed. I waited for Richard to tell me that it wasn't working or that she just wasn't ready. But he didn't. Instead, when we showed up the following week, Richard had set up shop on the blacktop area adjacent to the courts, and without the distraction of the clay, things went a little better. And so it went that without, with each subsequent obstacle we ran into, Richard found a way to work around it. Acing autism has meant a lot to our family over these past six years. As much as it's been something for Zoe, it's been something for the rest of us too. While Zoe is on the court, her younger, typically developing brother is running around playing tag with other kids his age who know what it's like to have a sibling with autism. It really shouldn't come as a surprise that acing autism has been so successful. The game of tennis provides so many opportunities to enrich the development of children, especially those on the autism spectrum. My husband and I have connected with other families we never would have met otherwise. We've been introduced to medical professionals and we've been invited to participate in research studies by virtue of our affiliation with acing autism. We've had the pleasure of meeting so many impressive high school and college students who have given up their time to volunteer at the program. We have watched as some of those volunteers have changed their majors or their career plans because their experience at Acing Autism has made them realize they wanted to pursue careers in autism-related fields. It's been extremely reassuring to know that Acing Autism is not only helping those affected directly by autism, but it's also helping to equip the next generation with the skills they will need to interact with those with autism. Perfect! Two hands, back hands. Acing Autism's growth to date is evidence of the potential and the demand for a program like this one. Acing Autism is a scalable, replicable idea. With the right resources and access to facilities, this is a program that could conceivably run all year round, just about anywhere, and literally serve thousands of children. About a year ago, I attended the curriculum night in Zoe's mainstream third grade class. Zoe spends most of her day in a special education classroom where she receives one-on-one -on -one instruction, but she's assigned to and, and is brought into a mainstream classroom for at least part of every day. As a parent, it gets harder and harder to attend those curriculum nights every year, knowing that even with whatever incredible progress Zoe may or may not be making at that point in time, the gap between her and the typical kids seems to get wider every year. But we think it's important that we maintain a presence with her typical classmates, and so we go. I went into Zoe's classroom that night, found her desk, and sat down. Eventually, the teacher instructed us to open packets that the kids had prepared for us, which included their hopes and dreams for the future. I was afraid Zoe hadn't been able to complete the assignment the same way as the other kids, so I hesitated before I opened it. Finally, I got the courage up, 
and I opened up Zoe's packet. What I saw pretty much brought me to tears. Not the tears that I usually expected. These were tears of joy as I read the words, when I grow up, my dream is to be a tennis player.